Natural Resources Committee. Mr. DeFazio for five minutes. Uh, I thank the gentleman and uh, I thank the full committee chairman uh, for uh, his statement. You know, this is another area where uh, I think there is a substantial grounds for agreement between the majority and the minority uh, in terms of uh, our objectives. Uh, but uh, perhaps the path there that we envision is maybe a little more complicated, uh, maybe less, a lot less expensive, and, uh, you know, something that hasn't been talked about much. I mean, we're, we're living off a 19th and 20th century uh, infrastructure as relates uh, to uh, water storage uh, in the western U.S. Uh, for, the, uh, for the most part. Uh, you know, there are areas uh, where we're still, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, just ditch systems uh, that uh, can, be, uh, can be improved uh, at a very low cost and uh, deliver uh, additional uh, water. There are other uh, innovative uh, things that could be done. What we need is to take a really comprehensive look at all the factors uh, that are playing, uh, playing in here. Uh, you know, we have a system that is in, in places uh, deteriorated uh, and needs uh, restoration repair. We have some that needs upgrading. Uh, there certainly are places where we could look at uh, new infrastructure. The major impediment, however, is the same impediment that we have on roads, bridges, highways and transit, the same uh, impediment that we have on the Corps of Engineers projects across the United States of America, and that is we are not investing in America's infrastructure the way our competitor nations are around the world. Simply not doing that. Uh, you know, this is, I spent a lot of time on this, particularly on the Transportation Committee, but it applies over here too. Uh, we're not investing in the parks infrastructure, we're not investing, as has been pointed out here, in, in water infrastructure. Uh, we need to make a commitment and we need to determine that there are investments and there are simple expenditures. Uh, of government funds. We don't discriminate in that way. And in fact, we've tied our hands even further by saying, well, we can't have any of those earmarks. Well, that means if you want to deal with a project in a state, uh, a new uh, irrigation project, a uh, storage project, you're probably going to get hung up by the rules. Uh, so, um, you know, we, we've got to take uh, an approach that's, uh, I think, more comprehensive. Look at changes in population, uh, look at changes uh, in the weather. Uh, look at new technologies uh, that are out there or improvements are out there for the existing system, how much can be gained then, what's the cost-benefit analysis relates there. And then, yes, we can, we can look at uh, additional storage uh, as needed. But uh, massive new storage projects, particularly storage projects that would employ 20th century uh, engineering techniques, uh, are not uh, the long-term solution to, to the Western problems. We are uh, looking at major problems, uh, even in the Northwest, where people make jokes about our rainfall on the west side, uh, docks on the east side where uh, they don't get that much rain. Uh, but uh, even there, uh, we're seeing major changes in patterns that are going to overwhelm or underwhelm our existing system potentially because of uh, early, uh, you know, early snow melt uh, patterns in the last few years of uh, very heavy rains into, and warm weather in, well into the winter season, which uh, leads to less snowpack, which leads to higher flows. New challenges uh, to the system, to so the major systems like the Columbia Basin system, to the Willamette system and others. Uh, and we simply need to take a comprehensive approach. I'm pleased we're having this hearing here today, and I believe it's one, at least one witness, I think maybe two, will touch a, a bit on, on those themes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, would you yield? Oh. Yeah, certainly I'd yield. 